10 knitting tips that really make your project look neater. Hi everyone, my name is Norman, I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and I want you to become a better knitter and that's why today's video is all about knitting hints, tips and secret techniques. Now, if you are an advanced knitter or you are currently learning how to knit here on YouTube, then you probably already saw a video or two about knitting hacks. For example, you could use a hand-painted antique teapot instead of a yarn bowl. Isn't it genius? Setting the fun aside, I have to admit that most of the knitting tips and hacks you find all over the internet work. However, most of them just make knitting easier, cheaper or faster, which is fine, but they don't make you better at knitting. I mean, sure, picking bamboo needles uh, instead of metal needles might prevent your stitches from falling off so easily. But will it make your finished project look better? Maybe not. So in this video, I want to focus on ways to improve standard knitting techniques. You know, just simple little twists that you can employ right away for instant results even if you are a beginner. I also made sure to attach two very interesting bonus tips which you will find at the very end of this video. So enough of the preface, let's show you some very easy knitting tips. But before, if you know a tip that I'm not mentioning in this video, please comment below and tell me what works for you. I'm very sure other people watching this video will find it super, super helpful. And of course, like this video right now to support my work. Knitting tip number one, neaten up the last stitch of a bind off. Okay, you probably know this problem. You bind off all stitches and your last stitch looks like this. It forms this little ear. Not so nice in a lot of cases, but there is an easy way to prevent that. So when you're at the last stitch, instead of knitting this stitch as normal, slip it to the right needle. And then find this little um, stitch here and lift it onto your uh, right needle and then slip these two stitches back to your left needle and knit them together knit them together and then um, bind off that last stitch the normal way and if you do it like this your bind off edge will look like this so there is not this huge ear here instead you will have a really nice and flat bind off edge Knitting tip number two, a neater SSK. Another common problem in knitting is SSK, slip, slip, knit. No matter if you're knitting socks or sweater, your K2 talk knit two together probably looks neat, but your left leaning decrease always looks a bit wonky. Now, there are many different ways to knit a left leaning decrease and some of the discussion is really kind of academic, like slip three times under a full moon and add a little bit of fairy dust. But there is one super, super easy and simple solution which looks like this. Let me show you. First of all, knit your SSK the regular way and try to knit it at the very tip of your needle without stretching those stitches overly much. But knit it the regular way and here comes the trick. And when you come across the SSK on the return row, you purl it through the back loop. You purl it through the back loop and that's already it. So if it's flat, you Purl it through the back loop and obviously if you're knitting in the round you would have to knit it through the back loop. So let me get to the end of the row quickly. And when you do it like this your decrease line will suddenly look all nice and neat. And the reason why I prefer this method is quite simple. SSK looks a bit wonky for two reasons. First of all you may stretch out the stitches too much as you work the decrease. Okay. But the second reason is you are actually creating a twisted stitch here. After all, you are knitting these two stitches together through back loop. But in the next row, you knit across the regular way, meaning you create an untwisted stitch and that is always going to look a bit weird. Knitting tip number three, a neater cast on edge. Much like the bind off edge, the cast on edge is often a very visible part of your project. And there are two common problems I observe a lot. 
Problem number one. Your edge is actually too stiff and the fabric will get wider towards the middle. And there is a very, very easy way to prevent that. Instead of casting on around one needle, pick up two needles and do your regular cast on and use both needles and cast on the required number of stitches. And once you're finished, simply remove the second needle and knit across it will look a bit weird in the first round or row, but it will stretch out later on, big promise. You can also cast on around a needle two sizes bigger or so for a stretchier or less stretchy edge. And the second problem, most people start the cast on with a slip knot. Now when you're knitting flat, I don't really see a problem there. It's okay. However, when you're knitting in the round, that knot can be very visible. See, here is my cast on edge and here is the slip knot. So even when you're using a special method to join in the round, that slip knot will be visible, but there is a super, super easy solution. So instead of starting with a slip knot, simply start with a simple twisted loop around your knitting needle and then continue casting on the regular way. And see, you have stitches here, but there is no slip knot at the base. And once you joined in the round and knit across a couple of rounds, this is uh, the way it looks like now. So the transition is utterly seamless and you don't end up with the little slip knot here. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to address knitting in the round in this video. So if you need help or tips, please watch my video. I'll link it to you up in here. Tip number four, weave in tails using a sharp tapestry needle. Now I have a full video on weaving ends here on YouTube with 10 different techniques. I'll link it to you up in here. So I want to make this as brief as possible. For whatever reason, someone in the US established that weaving in ends with blunt tapestry needles is a thing. And it has been repeated so many times that you'll even find it in some knitting books. There are however two kinds of tapestry needles. There are blunt tapestry needles and you use them uh, for grafting, seaming and all the techniques where you need to go around stitches. But for weaving in ends, you really should go through stitches. So right through, see, I split them. And I hope the benefit is kind of obvious. When you go around stitches, there's not a lot holding these stitches in place. But when you split them, um, as you weave in, um, the fibers will interlock so much easier. Knitting tip number five, don't twist your yarn. Okay, so this is a really, really important uh, topic that a lot of knitters aren't even aware of. Uh, yarn is spun and twisted. So just pick apart a four ply DK or eight ply yarn and you will see what I mean. The most commercially available yarn is balanced, meaning it will stay flat and it doesn't curl up on itself. However, a lot of knitters add a twist to the yarn through their knitting process. And why is this important? Have you ever knitted a two by two rib uh, stitch only to notice that the left stitch is kind of wider than the right stitch, or you finished a square and stock in it stitch and the stitches just didn't look right, even though you normally know you can maintain an even tension. Well, in almost all of these cases, uh, the answer is, well, that's because um, there is a twist. <laughs> So, uh, and in some cases you are the one responsible for that. So let me show you something very interesting. So I wound up a little ribbon here evenly around this knitting needle, sort of to imitate a center pull. Let me get this off the needle to imitate a center pull. And now I'm going to pull my yarn here as if to knit from the center. Do you see what is happening? Suddenly there is a lot of spin and it, this is twisting. And the reason why this is happening is you spin the yarn around as you wind, but as you unwind, you don't spin around and this will add twist. And sometimes you will notice that your yarn actually looks like this. And this is a really, really good indicator that you have been adding a twist and this will influence your stitch definition. So if you have a yarn cake like this, 
Ideally speaking, you should unwind it like this. So mount it, I don't know, on a spindle or so, so that it can spin around itself and untwist the yarn as you knit it. If you do the center pull, well, then this effect happens. You twist the yarn. Now, I mean, for most yarns, this is probably not the biggest issue. However, if you are using a DK yarn or any other highly twisted yarn, you will often see how the yarn will sort of curl up like this as you knit. And this is a good indicator that, well, something is maybe not going as it should. And it's just so easy to fix. And actually, that's the reason why I rarely use yarn cakes and I always um, wind my yarn into a ball. Knitting tip number seven, fixing twisted stitches on the fly. Um, this is a regular knit stitch. So it starts here at the back and ends up in the front from left to right. And you can just knit it. And then sometimes you end up with twisted stitches on your needle. So it starts here in the front and go ends here at the back from left to right. Often this happens when you pick up stitches for the gusset of your heel or when you accidentally drop stitches or you have to unravel parts of your work. And especially when you fix uh, stitches, the last uh, stitch you slip on the needle is often twisted. And there's an easy way to untwist them. Simply knit them through the back loop. Just knit them through the back loop. Now, I know you can also manually untwist them like this. Or um, you can slip things back like this. But I just feel knitting through the back loop is so much more seamless. And it also works for twisted purl stitches. You can also purl them through the back loop to untwist them. Knitting tip number seven, fixing stitches without a crochet hook. You probably know that you can fix a dropped stitch with a crochet hook and that's always a nice technique to master. However, when your stitch just unraveled one row, you can also fix it just using your knitting needle. So pick it up with your needle and slip it back to the left needle. Make sure that you don't twist the stitch and then simply pick through that strand. And there is your fixed knit stitch. You just have to slip it back to your left needle. And this is a super helpful technique because you can also use it to adjust stitches. So imagine your pattern required this stitch here to be a purl stitch, but it is a knit stitch. So what you can do is you can insert your right needle into that stitch one row below and then pull out that extra strand here Then slip that stitch back to the left needle and bring the yarn to the front. And then you can Curl that stitch. And just like that, you created a purl stitch here. And of course, it also works the other way around. So insert, then pull out the extra strand, bring the strand to the back, and create a knit stitch. And we are back to the beginning. Here is that knit stitch. And this technique is super helpful and actually has a lot of smart applications. For example, if you are noticing you are producing ladders um, when you're knitting in the round, you can simply slip the first stitch. So slip it without knitting. And this will create a little float here on the backside, which is much shorter than the yarn used for a regular knit stitch. And when you come across the slip stitch in the next round, you can knit it using that little strand and this will create a much tighter knit stitch. And then obviously you would have to slip that stitch again to create another float and continue knitting. So this can be a very helpful technique to um, fight ladders when knitting in the round. And some people even use it to uh, create neater two by two rip stitches. So it is really, really, really helpful. Knitting tip number eight, fixing your tension. 
I do you know the problem you are knitting stockinette stitch and you end up with a couple of stitches that are just further apart or you're knitting in the round and you end up with letters here. Now, there are probably a million attempts here on YouTube showing you how to maintain an even tension. And that is certainly a very important topic. It is also not the easiest thing to teach because it's very difficult to visualize tension and it takes a lot of practice. That's why I wanted to make you aware of the fact that you can also manually adjust your tension with your knitting needle after you finished. So no matter if it's these kind of weird stitches or ladders, you can fix it. Let me show you how. So what you would have to do is you need to pick up your um, knitting needle and then pull out the excess and move it towards the sides and uh, every stitch you sort of, well, you make it a bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger than it originally was and thereby you distribute um, the yarn a bit more evenly. This sometimes takes a bit more time and you need to go over each stitch twice. But the idea is you pull out the excess and distribute it evenly across the whole row. So the whole row will be a tiny bit bigger, but it will be so much less visible than uh, one stitch being bigger. And when you're knitting in the round, you can do exactly the same. So uh, starting on the wrong side, you just go into the adjacent stitches and pull it out one at a time. So always follow the path of your uh, yarn and pull out any excess towards the sides like this. And you obviously have to do the same on the other side as well and move, um, distribute the yarn evenly. What you can also do is, what you can also do is, you can, here is the letter, well, I fixed it a bit already. But what you can also do is you can bring your knitting needle from the back and then stretch out each, the rib between the knit stitches here like this, like this, and do the same on the other side and fix the ladder like this. Tip number nine, knit with two different needle sizes. Here is another very easy tip to adjust your tension. A lot of knitters struggle with their purl tension, meaning their purl stitches are always a bit looser than their knit stitches and that's why stock and knit stitch ends up looking like this. Now, I do urge you to practice your pearls. However, as a shortcut, you can also purl the return rounds using a smaller needle uh, to balance your stock in its stitch because the size of your stitches is only defined by the right needle within limits, of course. It doesn't matter how big um, or small your left needle is. Only your left knee, uh, right needle defines the size of your stitches. But there is another twist to this technique. You can also use it to create almost lace-like patterns without any yarn over. So if you have a set of interchangeable knitting needles, you can simply attach two different sizes to either end. If you don't, well, watch my review of the best interchangeable knitting needles. I'll link it to you up in here. So for this shawl here, it is a simple one by one rib stitch. However, I knit the right side with a really, really small needle and the return uh, row with a really, really big needle. And this is the result. Isn't it stunning? It looks complicated, but it is super simple. Tip number 10, consider knitting in the other direction. This tip can only be used when you're knitting in the round, but there it is super helpful because some stitches are so much harder to perform than others. A lot of people struggle with their purling. If you're one of them, watch my video on how to purl faster, but even experienced knitters will have problems with stitches like purl three together through back loop and so on. So in these cases, you can simply turn your work around and knit in the other direction. So what you would have to do is you need to slip the first stitch and then you can knit across. 
simply knit across to achieve purl stitches on the right side. And once you're finished with that section, why just turn around again, slip the first stitch and knit across. And every knit stitch has a purl equivalent. So purl two together, knit two together, SSK, SSP and so on. So you can exchange all these stitches and knit either from the right or the wrong side uh, for some easier knitting. I promised you two bonus tips and here they are. Bonus knitting tip one, count the right way. One of the biggest issues, um, at least for me, when knitting is counting. If you are not a knitter, then you might never understand how difficult counting to 100 can be. But I found two things that really helped me and they both um, boil down to breaking down larger numbers into manageable parts. First, use stitch markers and use them a lot. But I don't use them the regular way, meaning you will very rarely see me actually having stitch markers on my needle. Instead, I will use them to count my cast on. So every 10 or 20 stitches, I place a little marker and then I cast 10 or 20 more stitches. That way, if you are disturbed and we all know how easily this can happen, you only have to count the last couple of stitches and not all those 400 stitches you needed for the lace shawl. And uh, then I will attach a stitch marker at the beginning of my round, but I will do so one or two rows below. That way I see, okay, here is the start of my round, but I don't need to slip the stitch marker because that is sort of annoying. And if you add a stitch marker in that manner every five or 10 rows or rounds, uh, this will make counting super easy because you don't have to count all the rows from the cast on edge to your current row to check if you have the 50 rounds required by your pattern, you simply count the stitch markers. And the second thing that really was a breakthrough for me is counting the right way. So when I have stitches on my needles, I don't count like this one, two, three, four, five. I don't because this takes forever. And it's also very easy to mess up once you are past a certain point, say 40 stitches. I count like this three, two, three, two, which is 10. Now every brain works differently, but I promise you that you will find certain numbers of stitches or items in general really that you can count correctly at a glance without counting one by one if that makes sense. So how many knitting needles are there? Three. You can see this without counting. So for me three plus two really works because this makes five. And when I counted uh, three plus, uh, plus two twice, I have ten. I mean, saying it out loud makes it sound complicated, but I do hope you know what I mean. Dr try to group the stitches in a way they are faster to recognize for your brain and then count those groups instead. And in a similar way, you can assign certain stitches to numbers. For example, if you are knitting a two by one rib stitch, then you could say every number dividable by three is a purl stitch. So you count as you knit one, two, three means purl, four, five, six, six means purl, seven, eight, nine, nine means purl. And then you can start all over again with one. No need to count to 127 and wondering if that's dividable by three or not. Now again, your brain might work differently. So maybe you are a more a visual kind of uh, girl or guy. Then try to um, group things into pictures, maybe two knit two knit stitches next to each other are uh, a little fork and a couple of pearl stitches next to each other are a little river or whatever. Just try to group things as so they are faster and easier to process for your brain. And for my second bonus tip, we are back in my living room because my last tip is not an actual technique, but more a recommendation that comes from the heart. Take breaks and take them frequently. Use an alarm clock or the timer function of your mobile phone or maybe an hour class. But don't knit for one or two hours straight without ever changing position. First of all, it's bad for your body, your muscles and your eyes. They need some diversity and time to relax. So every 15 or 20 minutes you should stretch out a bit. Go to the toilet, get a new cup of tea or even bring out the garbage, whatever. But there is also a second reason why you should take breaks. 
Use this moment to quickly check your knitting. A mistake is so much easier to fix when it's just two rows below and not somewhere down here. Also, if you are knitting a fitted garment like this sweater in the making here, you can use this moment to check if, it's ch if it still fits, pull it on or use the tape, whatever. Because, you know, mistakes happen and I've been knitting for 30 years and don't for a second believe that all my projects are flawless. However, mistakes are easily fixable when you notice them when they happen. Once you finish that sweater and you notice it's two sizes too big and you messed up the central repeat, well, then things are maybe a bit too late. So do check your work frequently. Anyway, that were my 10 knitting tips. I really hope I was able to inspire you a bit. Again, if you know any other tips that I didn't mention in this video, kindly comment below. And of course, like this video right now if you enjoyed watching and consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.